Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I will be explaining how to find a basis for the row space of a matrix. So in the previous video, I defined the row space of a matrix as the span of the vectors that create the rows. So for a matrix with M rows, the row space of A would be the span of all the rows from one to M. So in this particular example, we have a three by four matrix. So the number of rows is three. We can call this R1, this is R2, and this is R3. So the row space in this example is just the span of R1, R2, and R3. But now we want to find a basis for the row space, meaning we want to figure out which one of these vectors if any, are linearly dependent with the set, and we want to remove them because a basis is always linearly independent. So in order to reduce this set to find the basis, all we do is we take our matrix A, we row reduce it to a matrix B that is the row echelon form of A, and then we select the non-zero rows of B, and we take those rows as our basis. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that process. So I'm going to start with the matrix that we originally have. So matrix A, which is negative two, two, six, zero, zero, six, seven, five, and one, five, four, five. And let's go ahead and row reduce this. So I wanna use this position as the first pivot, and I want to eliminate this entry to zero. And in order to do that, I can take the third row and add one half times the first row. So when I do that, I get a row equivalent matrix that's equal to negative two, two, six, zero, zero, six, seven, five, and then one plus negative one is zero, five plus one is six, four plus three is seven, and five plus zero is five. And now I'm going to move on to this pivot position and I want to eliminate everything below it. So I'll take the third row again and I'm going to subtract the second row. And what I get is the row equivalent matrix, negative two, two, six, zero, zero, six, seven, five, and zero, six minus six is zero, seven minus seven is zero, and five minus five is zero. So this is the row echelon form of the matrix. So now all I have to do is select the non-zero rows, and those are just rows one and rows two. Row three is made up of all zeros, therefore we don't pick it as a basis vector. So now I can say that the basis for the row space of A is equal to the set of vectors negative two, two, six, zero, and zero, six, seven, five. And again, these correspond to the non-zero rows of the reduced echelon form of a matrix. And since the row space is preserved by these row operations that we did, then we know that this basis, even though it comes from the reduced echelon form, we know that this basis still spans the row space of A. And we also know that since these are non-zero rows, and since we have a pivot position in each of these rows, then these vectors must be linearly independent. So it satisfies the two criteria for a basis. Now the last thing that I wanna say is that the dimension of the row space of A is equal to the number of vectors in our basis. So in this case, we have one, two vectors. Therefore, the dimension of our row space is equal to two. The row space of the matrix in this example is two dimensional. And we refer to this as the rank of a matrix. So in this example, the rank of this matrix A is two, because there are two basis vectors, meaning that the dimension of our row space is two. 